Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. This is so much fun here at Integrity. So excited to, again, this week, welcome another incredible Integrity partner, Man, we have had so many fun times here together, and it just keeps getting better. I hope everybody's having an amazing, amazing week here at Integrity, and it's just about to get better. So here at Integrity, we have been announcing new partner after new partner, and these are these are just amazing people. And I love welcoming Michael and Melinda Wilhelm earlier in the week on Monday, and the massive announcement that was with Trusted Senior Specialists coming out in that video and just the big announcement. I know there were so many excited partners and family members here at Integrity to welcome them to the Integrity family. And so today we're excited to announce another incredible partner. And we're excited to announce that Jay Gavin Financial Services has joined the Integrity family. And as part of this partnership, John Gavin, founder of Jay Gavin Financial, will become a managing partner here at Integrity. This is an incredible business headquartered in Washington State, and Jay Gavin Financial Services is a high-performing IMO that specializes in client care, especially around the life insurance business. What started out as a short-term job in the life insurance industry, which is frankly kind of how I started out in the life insurance industry and many of our other partners, really has turned into a passion for John to grow this business and serve others. His story is a true testament to the power of this industry and how we can have a blessing on others in the lives of those people that we serve, as well as all of us that are part of this. I mean, it, as you continue to bless others, I believe that you continue to be blessed more yourself. And this is just one of those incredible stories. And I'm so excited to welcome my friend John Gavin to the Integrity family. John, congratulations, man. Thank you so much, Brian. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this opportunity. This whole, you know, I didn't get into the business to to end up here because I didn't know anything like this existed. None of us thought, um, none of us thought that big, yeah. No, no, we couldn't. I, you know, like you said earlier on, I, I didn't know insurance would be permanent for me. I thought it would be a bridge to gap to get back to the original occupation that I was in while that recovered. And and then I just found such a passion for it and, and decided to make this my life. And I couldn't have been happier to not only did I made that decision, but I was able to to get into business with some of the people I am now. And you know, like I said, I never thought something like this was possible. It just keeps getting better and better. Well, man, we are so excited to welcome you to the Integrity family. I would love to learn a little bit more of your story. And I love, you know, one of the great things about this Inspire podcast is we get to come on here, we get to get to know people in a more intimate way, get to know people at a deeper level through this. And the origin of your business is an incredible story because it's deeply connected to your personal journey as a man and as a father. And I think that is really cool. Can you share a little bit more about how you got into the industry and kind of how you got to this point today? Sure. My previous career, I was in the mortgage business. And just like a, you know, a lot of other people have come on here, a lot of other integrity partners as well too. And And I did fairly well there. I never worried about money, but I wasn't really good with it either. So anytime somebody came up with a, you know, any kind of business ideas or investment opportunities, I, I just dove in and, and hoped it'd work out, you know. And and so in the 2000, I was I was single when I got into the business. Met my wife at the time. We had a, a few kids that my two daughters a little bit later in life. I didn't I didn't start an early family. I was you know, 38 and 40 when I had my two kids, my two girls. And that's right around the time where the mortgage market started getting a little rocky. I held on to it a little bit longer than I should have. I made some investments just prior to they kind of tapped out my liquid assets. And so when the whole industry basically shut down, I had no assets to lean on and I had no income. So it was a really rough go. And me and the wife at the time tried to work it out, but the stress over over the years was just too tough. I mean, I couldn't, I, my industry was gone. I didn't know anything else at the time. And, you know, it caused a job shortage and a recession and, Nobody was hiring, and so I, I couldn't find any work anywhere else. And I applied for everything. I applied for, you know, I, I was just, I was going to job fairs. So I was applying for new, new jobs, careers, whatever, every day. 
I applied for a job as a milkman and wrote a cover letter and, and told him how much I love dairy. I applied for a job at a dating service and told him I love love. You know, I was, I was really putting myself out there just trying to find something to support my family because my kids were, you know, six months and, and just under two years at the time. And, and unfortunately, the, the marriage didn't survive. And my ex-wife moved back with her family, which was about four hours away, four and a half hours away with the two girls. And so I stayed in, in the Seattle area because I thought that, that there'd be you know, better opportunities for jobs there. And, and I was driving over the mountains to go see the girls every weekend. And you know, when, you, when you start to lose everything, you start downsizing. So the house went, the boats went, the cars went. And we, we were down to, to nothing by the time that the marriage was over. And, and so the car I had had no heat in it. <laughs> so I was driving over the mountain. Here I went from never worrying about money to not having anything at all. And, and my girls were so far away. And, and so I spent about a year and a half every weekend driving a car over the mountains to go see my kids. When it snowed, sometimes the pass would be closed and I, I wouldn't be able to get through and go see them. When it was open in the wintertime, sometimes... You know, I was pulling my socks off my feet and putting them on my hands because my hands were frozen <laughs> driving over the over the mountains there. You know, I, it, I just did what I had to do to get there. And I really wanted to move closer to them. But there's a couple of things. Was, it was they lived in a, a pretty rural area where there wasn't any work available. And I didn't have any money to move. So we did that for a while. And I went to go back into this. Now we get into 2011. And the mortgage market started to creep back a little bit. And some friends of mine said that, you know, their, their business were picking up. So I, I went back and got my license again and I went into the office. No, no, prior to that, okay, prior to that, I actually went to go work for a captive agency and I got my insurance license and I did work there for a year. And the money was just enough to keep me alive, but it wasn't any extra to do anything. We mostly did the PNC stuff. I did a lot of service stuff, not, not in sales, but I did get my insurance license there. And then after a year, that's when the mortgage market started picking back up again. And I was going back and into doing that. And on my first day in that office, somebody walked up to me and, and said, so you, you have your insurance license? And, and I said, yeah. And he asked me if I was looking to make some extra money. And there's no such thing as extra money at that time. I was looking to make some money, you know, and I said, yeah, but let me, let me get the mortgage back in the mortgage business and, and we'll see what you have over there. But, you know, as you know, Brian, the mortgage sales cycle is, you know, 45, 60 days to close anything and then get paid on it. And he started telling me that he gets paid every day. And so I started listening to him and he told me that he had leads that he'd called on and met with clients. And so I gave that a shot and that was my part-time deal. I was, I was still waiting to ramp up the mortgage business. And I found the, the time that I put into the selling insurance, I liked it a lot. I liked the fact that I was talking to people who had reached out and needed information on life insurance. And it was really similar to what I did in the mortgage business was I you know, went to their homes, I, I sat with them. I you know, went through their finances, I, I found the issues and, and protected the families and, and I built that connection with them. And the more I did that, the less I wanted to get back into the mortgage business. I, I thought that this was something I could do full time. And so I really enjoyed doing that, meeting with clients and helping them out. And so about a year later, Family First Life came. So I went over there and within six weeks, I made enough money to move to the other side of the mountains to be with my kids. So the first time in two and a half years by this point that I lived by my kids. And so I was really fortunate that, you know, not only did I have the income to do it, but being in the insurance business, you can create your market. And I found that the rural market was a great market to work in. And so, you know, not being, you know, four, four and a half, five hours away from my kids, I was able to move six minutes down the street from them. You know, so I'm so grateful to that. And then, you know, then here we are eight years later, and our lives are completely different. I'm thankful that I was so broke when my kids were young because they don't know, they don't know some of the things that we did. Yeah. They don't know that when they wanted to go to the zoo, we actually went to Petco to go see the gerbils, you know? And so, you know, it just took off from then. And, and I think that, you know, I look back and, and losing everything was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because I did it while I was, you know, I was not young by any means whatsoever, but young enough to find a new industry and old enough to appreciate it. My kids now, you know, we're completely taken care of. We're able to help out a lot of other families. Now I've, you know, the last three years, almost four years now, I've really focused on building the agency up and, you know, not trying to find people that were in similar circumstances as me, but there's a lot of people out there that are struggling and, and to, to provide them this opportunity to turn their lives around in such a, a quick amount of time 
you know, that's the most rewarding part of all is, is I had no idea when I got my insurance license, you know, I was just trying to get a job and, and I had no idea how powerful it was and that I could, you know, solidify my family, help other families. And then, you know, then there's the, the other ways too, is giving back financially. And, and now I've got some circumstances with some health issues with some other family members and, and they don't have to worry about finances either. And it all comes from getting an insurance license, getting into this business. Man, oh my gosh, man. This is it's just an amazing story. One of the reasons we started Inspire is to share stories like this. And part of that is, you know, frankly, to just to get to know each other on I think on a deeper level about, you know, really understanding like where we all came from. Um and man, I, I just can't imagine how difficult those early days were got to be with your kids taking your socks off to keep your hands warm as you <laughs> as you traveled across the mountain to go see them but you know that perseverance yeah and one of the things you said was i just did whatever it took and that's where you know whenever we partner with great people i mean first of all we get to partner with great people and if you listen to our inspire podcast you hear amazing stories about how people overcame, right? And none of us were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. I know for me, I was listening to you and thinking back about some of my story about getting started and how tough those early days were and thinking, man, I'm, I know I'm going to make it, but I'll do whatever it takes. Just, I just got to get there, right? And I know all of our partners, I mean, they can all relate to this in so many different levels, but Really, the heart that you had and you have, John, about really this love for your kids and saying, "Man, I just gotta, I just gotta figure that out." And and you know, I think sometimes you overcomplicate things in life. Kids just a lot of times just want to be with you, right? And just you know, hang out and you know, the idea of, of instead of going to the zoo, we'll go to Petco. Like <laughs> we used to take our we used to take our son to PetSmart all the time when he was really little because he just loved. Love looking at animals, but I mean, it, it is, I, I just love this in so many ways, just hearing you talk about this, because whenever you partner with somebody, you can put out a press release, but those are words on a paper. One of the reasons we shoot our videos is to share more about the personality and persona and the passion and what this is creating, but then the Inspire podcast even, I think, takes it to a different level for us to get to know each other in a big way. And I love that you shared that story. So thank you so much for doing that. I love that what started out as a part-time job became a full-time passion yep. as well, which is, is just such a cool thing. Now, how do you think you took those experiences that you've had there and created really, you know, just an amazing business? And, and how do you think that that shaped you to, to do what you've done today? I think that, you know, going through what with, what I did and the way I started out in order for me to keep going every day, you know, there, I had to have a few things. And one of them was blind faith because I was relying on people who I trusted in. They were telling me every day, trust me, this will work out for you. And I really believed in them. I didn't think they'd lead me astray. I thought that they were just further along in the business. They knew who I was as a person, knew who my skill set was. They knew the industry. And they said, the only way you'll fail is if you don't quit. And so I just knew that there's nothing that would ever make me quit. If I just had to keep working every day and I'd succeed and the only thing that would derail me was quitting, I learned how important that blind faith is. Because if I didn't have that in them, you know, who knows what would happen. And, and I know that people coming on now, you know, they, everyone comes here in, under different circumstances. Some might be fine. Some might have, you know, a you know, pretty good bankroll and just roll into it. And, but a lot of people don't. And so... I think back of the way I started and how I needed someone to believe in. And now I want to be that person that others believe in. And so my approach to everybody that we bring on here is 100% honest because I want to set honest expectations. I want to talk to them about what it's going to take to be successful. And if they do those things, they have a really good chance of succeeding. And I want people to have that, that faith in me because I'm not going to steer them wrong. And I, I really, I love the fact that, you know, we can bring people on from all walks of life and I see how quickly their lives change, but they have to believe in something other than taking, just taking a chance. And so I think early on me having that faith in others made me want to develop that trust and that faith 
and myself with the agents that we bring on here as well, too. I think there, there's an interesting point of what you, you said about blind faith. First of all, I don't think that there is anything such as blind faith. I think it's just faith because yeah. faith has to be blind, right? Faith, the definition, I just looked this up as we were talking, the definition of faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And my personal faith and, and my religious faith, a lot of times it doesn't make sense, right? Faith, a lot of times doesn't make sense. You've just got to have this truly blind trust and faith and confidence that I'm going to step out on this and it's going to be fine, right? And, and that complete trust and confidence in someone or something is, is just a huge part. You know, John, you and I have talked about this, and I know Sean Mike and, and others, we've talked about, like, we don't buy businesses here. At this we partner with great people. And one of the reasons we're able to run so fast is that if we all trust each other to do the right thing, to keep working harder than ever before and grow in shareholder value collectively, we can do more together than we could ever do on our own. But we're incapable of trying to run somebody's business. We're incapable of trying to, to do all those other things. It's like, how do we come together and do something with faith, really this faith in, in business, to you know, create something bigger than we could have ever created you know, on our own? And I, I remember there's a parable. I won't try to go into the whole thing, but there's this guy stuck in this hole. Right. There's a story about this guy stuck in a hole and he's calling out for help. And, you know, a guy walks by, it's a businessman that walks by and he says, you know, if you work hard enough, you can you know, dig yourself out of that. And then he walks off and then the guy's still screaming like, I've got to get out of this hole. And the doctor walks by and the doctor, you know, says, hey, you know, let me write your prescription. Here's how you get out. And he walks off. And then a priest walks by and he says, you know, hey, I'll say I'll say a prayer for you. But but a friend walks by and jumps in the hole. And he's like, what are you doing, man? I'm like, how, why are you down here in the hole with me? And the guy's like, because I've been down here before and I know the way out, right? And that, that's so true. And I, I love like Sean Mike in particular, and where well, you guys are building a family first life and all the amazing partners that you guys have there and that we get to be part of because we've been there before, right? And so when when <laughs> when... When you have an agent that's like, I don't know how I can get out of this. I want to go see my kids. I want to go through this. You go, listen, I've been in that hole before. Let me jump in and I'll show you how to get out of it. Because you you know what it takes. You know what it's been like. And that story, just as you were talking, just kind of resonated so many ways. Because you can help agents and, frankly, serving more families than you could have ever done if you hadn't have gone through that. Like, I mean... From a sports perspective, I was at dinner last night. We were talking about this whole idea of this NIL thing where this name, image, and likeness. Listen, I, I don't know what other people's opinion of it is. I think it's one of the worst things in the world. And it's not about the monetization of college athletes and all that stuff. I, I don't really care about that. What I care about is if I were, a, if I were an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old or a 20-year-old, if somebody gave me $10,000 or $100,000, or like some of these guys get like a million dollars or more, I would be screwed up, man. Like, I mean, you have to, you have to go through, like, it's, you're just not prepared at that early age for that. And I think back about my story about how we started Integrity and man, I had to have Tom and Mike signing personal guarantees on my notes. And like, I mean, there were just so many days it's like, golly, man, I don't know if we're ever going to get out of this thing. But you had friends that had been there and were like, hey, let me help you out with it. And, and I think that that's just part of this mission that we're on of bringing in new agents, more advisors. How do we serve more families? And at the end of the day, if we do what's right all the time, you know, we can accomplish some amazing things. But your story, if it would have all been easy in those early days, John, imagine where you would be, right? You, I, I don't think you would be here. I don't think you would have gone... No. And, and and you can only look if you can only you can only see that in retrospect, right? And looking back. And so I don't know about you, but I, I think about some of the hard things in my life that I have gone through and just think in, in retrospect, I mean part of that's faith, man. You thank God for like hey, thank you for getting me out of that first of all, but thank you for you know what you taught me through that as well. Absolutely. Well man, what what are you so you're building this massive business? 
you know, we've been talking about this for a while about you coming on and partnering with us. What are you so excited about here at Integrity? What do you what what do you hope to gain out of this partnership? Because I think that's also oh, a big part of this. Like, how do we? Yeah, you know, I, I was in a big meeting with all of our Integrity Dallas office the other day, and I said, guys, like, let's innovate, like, create something crazy, like, figure out ways we can make it easier to do business with us. How do we figure out ways to inspire others and and innovate going forward? And so. We can do anything we want here, which is amazing. What are you wanting to gain out of this? So there's there's so much. And, and, and the whole process has been so cool because from day one, you know, from all the, from, from Ben and Steven and, and all the conversations I've had, every time I get off the phone with somebody, I'm like, man, those, they're like the nicest people I've ever met in business. And, and it's not that you ever think that that's going to, end but it just kept going along from every person we've met in every different department like me and my staff are just like they're just but like the dna is different over there they're just so positive so nice and so easy to work with and and so once we completed the process and now we're we're trying to find out you know what is possible and i know my staff is so excited to work with thomas arts and you know wrapping our heads around the fact that you know we've operated sort of like a small business on the east side of Washington, but now we have the resources of a massive business at our hands. And so we're just making those contacts now to to see what's possible. And and I think the marketing side of it is is incredible. And also taking so much of the back office stuff off our plate. You know, my I have an office manager that did a lot of work for me. And and she said, when this is done, I'm going to have so much more time to put into, like you said, the creative side of things, to start things that we couldn't before because we just didn't have the time and the resources combined at, at one time. And so we're just tapping in to see what's possible here. But I do know one thing, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really close with some of the other partners and I've seen what it's done for their business. And, and we just want to do the same because there's, you know, there's so many other people out there that need an opportunity like this to get into the insurance business, to build an agency, to get possibly an integrity partnership. And we're just tapping into those resources to see what we can possibly do. But it's exciting because every turn we make, we love working with the people at Integrity and they're so helpful. And we just don't even know what we can do yet, but we're excited about where it's going to go. Man, you couldn't say it better. I'm so excited. I think we're all just getting started. We've got a lot of work to do. This is for me, and I think for all of us, this is the greatest opportunity that any of us could have. And you start thinking about if you could double down and just continue to serve people and work harder for the next however many years, there is no limit to the possibilities of what we can create. And I think it's also about the next generation coming behind us as well. I was at a dinner mm-hmm. last night. I was in downtown Dallas at a, a dinner, had a big group in and having dinner and I went to the restroom and came back. And this guy got up and said, hey, man, I just want to introduce myself. My name's Rob Richmond. And <laughs> I'm the first wife. And I'm going to be one of your partners one day. And I want you to know that because I can't wait to be part of what you guys are creating. And I thought that was like the coolest thing in the world, man. And first of all, like, yeah, he was just like, I just wanted to make sure like we connected because I'm going to be one of your partners one day. And I'm sitting there like, that's so cool. And now you're sitting back going, man, I'm rooting for that guy. Like, I want yeah. I want us to just crush it to help that next generation of people who, who want to come in and become partners. Because if we don't do our job here, you know, if we're not continuing to grow and expand, it's going to be hard to continue to add people. But, man, that, there's there's people all over who are sitting there watching what we're doing and sitting here, John, that's going to see your video and your announcement tomorrow and go, man, I want to get there. I want to be where, where John is. And it's, it's our job to jump in that hole, right? And say, listen, yeah. I know the way out. Let's go. Let's go get it, man. And I can't wait for those days. So yeah, I've got about of three of Rob's. I've got about three of Rob's that you're going to be meeting soon, and and Let's we're going to be partnering yeah. with them. We're going to be partnering. With, yeah, absolutely. And, How and cool the excitement's just everywhere. It's really cool. It's really well, cool. And well, my my good buddy Sean Mike, and I want to bring on Sean real quick. Sean is one of the most fabulous leaders in the world. But that's one thing Sean's been talking about is like, how do we keep up this path, this road to partnership you guys have to create like this opportunity for the next 
John Gavin. I remember the first time Sean mentioned you, John, of like this guy, John Gavin, he's going to be your partner in about a year. And so we, you know, we started talking about these names and, and it's, awesome. it's going to be amazing. So I wanted to have Sean be the first to uh, welcome you here at Integrity. Hey, John, congratulations. I love you. Love your family. Uh, John, first of all, Brian, what you heard from John is what we get from John every minute of every day. And I think it, it, it's it's what you've talked about since day one, right? The money's a byproduct. John doing what he did for his girls, dude, the money though. I mean, that that just what he was able to do with that byproduct. I remember hearing a story from day one. John, somebody's very transparent. Like he's just, he is who he is. Um, and he was very upfront and forthright about what he wanted out of life and where he was. He didn't pretend to be. It makes it a lot easier to work with people when they're honest. You know, like, how you doing? Not very well. Financially, I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well with where I am with my kids. I need to get closer to them. This isn't working for me. I need to figure it out, you know? And he's one of the hardest working people I know. He's got a huge heart, too. And his story and his grind and what he's been through is a testament to just his character. So, I mean, to see it now, John, I was listening to you talking and remembering the first time I heard that story, which was like real time. And now to think where you are today and where your family is, that this is what you know, get you up in the morning and why I, you know, I love this team so much. So Brian, he's going to be a big asset to the team. And also if we ever have like a integrity, strongest man competition ever, <laughs> he has to be in because I'm pretty sure he can squat a Volkswagen bug on his back. I'm pretty sure I'm not, I haven't seen it, but one of the, just the nicest human beings you ever meet. And he's a guy you want on your side. And he is right about some of the folks that he's, he's bringing i've met i've met him and just quality quality people and john's just a plug and play guy like you know show me what i need to do and i'll do it and and just everybody else like let me know what i can do to serve the team he's all about service all about service he's one of the most appreciative people ever he's always thankful for everything and i'm like we didn't do anything but you're welcome so it's gonna be a great fit john happy for you the girls love you brother and brian thanks for all you do this would be, not be possible without what y'all do at corporate and i will echo what what john said too you know, every single person at Integrity, from IT to marketing to, I mean, everybody, everybody we deal with on our numbers, they're just, they're professional, they're good people, they're passionate, they care about what we're doing, and they're in it with you. They're in that hole with you, fighting. So, you know, I just, I appreciate you for, for your leadership for making that happen, because when people are in there with you, man, I got no problem fighting all day long every Amen. Amen to that. Hey, how cool was it that I ran into Rob Richmond? I never met Rob. How cool was that? He ran into him last night. And right. he's like, hey, hey, listen, I'm going to be your partner. Like, I, like <laughs> you guys are paving that way. Like, we, we, have, an, we have an obligation. Like, we have, like, I don't know about you guys, but when people tell me that, and I'm sitting there like, golly, man, I'm, I'm going to work harder to make this so when Rob's here, like, it's even better, right? Or any of these people. So it's pretty cool. So if you if you talk to him, give him a shout out. I will talk to him today. He will tell me all about seeing you. And I agree with you. It's an obligation, Brian. And that's how I feel every day. Sean, real quick. Thank you so much. I love you too, brother. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. Hey, i right back at you, bro. Well, hey, buddy. Appreciate you, Sean. And speaking of Sean, let's have another Sean. we got Sean Rosario. Sean, man, first of all, Sean, you've been crushing it. Your team, 100% year-over-year growth for the last couple of years. I mean, would you guys – I think it's another group that would you guys bring to the table, we're just scratching the surface. And if we can really unlock that across the entire FFL platform or even others, now we are just scratching the surface. But, Sean, I wanted you to, to jump in and say hi and congratulations as well. Yeah, uh, good morning, Brian. Thanks for having me on. And John, John Gavin, congratulations, man. Couldn't happen to a better person. And for you, for Anya, for the kids, we can't make it through an entire phone call. Not not at, not mention Tyson, his you know, <laughs> two, two, <laughs> his two hundred pound mastiff. But oh at one point, I remember I've been I've been with John since since his, the beginning of his career, and we've worked in the trenches together. I remember coming to a house that he was renting and he had, he was sharing it with his behemoth of a dog and, and going in, I was like, well, where's the furniture? He's like, well, I, I'll get to that. Right. I'll get, I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah. I had to buy Tyson his kennel. So Tyson had this kennel that he sat in and, and literally John had like one Ikea furniture or, or, or a couch and a, and a couple folding chairs and a folding table, but John did it the right way. He's always done the right thing. I think the, you know, people who have a self-deprecating sense of humor, people who don't make it about themselves, 
it's funny because that draws people towards them. It's never been about John. John's always been trying to help people, whether it's been an appointment that maybe he stayed in the house too long, right? Like, you know, hey, you can't, you can't spend two hours with a single client, but he really wanted to help that client. So from a micro level, John did it the right way all the time. And so to see this prosper, to see this come to fruition, and now he's an integrity partner, I love seeing that because you want to see the good guys win. And John's a good guy. And Brian, to speak to the success that my staff and the agents have had in partnering with Integrity, a lot of the credit goes to Integrity. I mean, I would like to sit here and say, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm doing such a great job. But first and foremost, it's the staff, it's the agents there in the field. But the resources that we have, you hear that all the time, almost like it's just the thing to say. But truly, the resources we have, and I'm sharing this with John, there were things before that Sean and I didn't have figured out. You know, certain, I'll give an example. We had someone who wanted to join Family First Life. They wanted to work in the advanced markets in what I do or what my team does, but they had to satisfy another requirement with group insurance. And Brian, I don't have group insurance. John doesn't have group insurance. We reached out to Mark Steuven, who does a great job there. And he said, hey, we'll put you in contact with this partner. We married them up. We were able to take care of that. And then we brought that agency to a place where they could help who they wanted to help. We prospered, they prospered, all of integrity prospered. So I've always told people as they head towards this, this seems like the finish line. It's not. It's the start of something even bigger. So John, like I said, buddy, I'm proud of you. I congratulate. We've been it since the very beginning, doing it the right way. So the best is yet to come. And thank you, John, for having me on the call. It means a lot to me. You bet. And Sean, thank you so much for everything you did. You know, that, that faith I talked about earlier, you know, Sean was such a key component of that because he knew where I was when I started. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. And when I had, God, I'm so appreciative. I almost made it, Brian. Almost. <laughs> I love it, man. When it was, you know, I had nothing. And there was times where I ran out of food. And I'd go sell my plasma to feed my girls just to get through the weekend. And then start back up Monday, just trying to help people out and serve families and sell insurance. And, and then and Sean was with me the whole way. Yeah, I did it long enough, and, and here we are. And I really want to help as many people as I can because I do know that struggle. And not everybody has a, a Sean Mike or a Sean Ruggiero to lean on. And I'm fortunate that I did. So I'm so thankful. First of all, thank you. John, I, I think what Sean, Sean said some really profound things, man. We could do a whole podcast on what Sean Rosario just said on a bunch of, we, Sean, we, we ought to just do another podcast just to bring back some of these points you just had. But like literally when people are more honest, self-deprecating and just more authentic, man, it makes you root for them more. Like the world tells you, you got to be tough and all that, that, that nonsense. That is not true. The more real you are, the better. I'm getting so many texts from my partners and our coworkers. They're just like, man, I love this guy. I can't wait to meet him. And it's because of your authenticity. And I think the fact that people can relate, right? I mean, they can relate to the fact that, you know, we're all trying to, to do something together. And the other thing that Sean said is this is not the finish line. A lot of people might think, you know, this is like, oh my God, I finally arrived. Like, this is the starting line, right? So everything else has been kind of preparing us for this journey. So it was at dinner last night with a great friend, and we're talking about partnering together. And he was like, man, you guys have accomplished so much. Like, how did you do all this? And I was like, dude, we haven't done anything yet. I mean, honest to God, we are just getting started. And I just can't wait to, to see what we can do because we know the fact that we're bringing in guys like Sean Ruggiero, Sean Mike, John Gavin and a lot of other amazing people to the Integrity family, Michael and Linda Wilhelm talking about starting their business next to a bar that, you know, played you know, loud music the whole time. He couldn't hardly think. Man, everybody is really at this point like, let's go. And this is this is the starting line in a, in a huge way. And I'm super proud to be your partner. And, and we're going to be announcing this tomorrow. And we are just honored to welcome you to the Integrity family. This is truly a family, and we're proud to be a part of our family. Thank you so much, Brian. Well, congratulations. Thank you, my man. And congratulations and thanks to all the team at the Family's First Life and 
And thank you, Sean and, and Sean, for joining us today and, and sharing your hearts on this as well. Congratulations on everything. This has been, man, I, every time I get into one of these podcasts, I step back and I go, man, I, I think this is my favorite. It is, it's, uh, <laughs> this is truly one of my, my favorites for sure because of just the authenticity and just the, the, the deep messages I know resonate with, with all of us out there. So, John Gavin, congratulations, man. We're proud to be a partner. Can't wait for this announcement tomorrow to make sure that we like, share, send that around as well for everybody on the call. Hope everybody has an amazing, amazing rest of the week. Hope you're as blessed to this story as I've been today. And let's go help even more people become partners here at Integrity. God bless you guys. Have a great one.